I'm going to be talking tonight, revisiting some dark themes that some people might find depressive. If you don't want to listen to such things, you might not want to listen to this video clip. I play guitar with people uh, over the internet uh, because of the virus. We don't meet in person anymore. And last week I, I picked a song called At 17 by Janice Ian. It has interesting chord progressions. It starts out in C, but I think eventually goes to E flat and even an A flat. Anyway. Nice tune, but somewhat of a depressed uh, kind of message. And one guy on the internet session started saying, "Oh, uh, Art, I'm going to be depressed all night. What a sad song." And he was, we were all laughing. So he might have been half serious or n completely serious or not serious at all. I don't know. But anyway, uh, what we're going to do, t what I'm going to discuss tonight, is going to be a lot sadder than that song. Okay. In a past episode, I spoke about the age of the universe, the uh, size of the universe. I'm one among seven point whatever billion people. Uh, my life expectancy probably is less than 20 years, etc., etc., etc. And I, I, I mentioned how that, that those are facts, and even that ignoring that, well, not let's say being able to face up to those facts and you still have a satisfying life maybe was a type of cosmic consciousness. And I'm going to take that idea a little further tonight. In another episode, I spoke about an experience I had in my early 20s, an inrush of light. Uh, I would call it a mystical experience, an experience of God as uncreated light. And I was reflecting last night how that occurred at a time in my life when I was very broken, very, uh, not suicidal, but just very, imagine, I won't get personal, imagine if you lose a child or a spouse or a job or whatever, you know, just something like that happening. And feeling very, very. And that was when the light came rushing in. And the some of the religious teachers, the mystics, talk about we have a phenomenal ego, that that deals with the, the everyday world. It's what we need to survive. Uh, it's what our name refers to. When, we, when someone says art, they mean that. And then we have a deeper self. And especially in the Eastern tradition, the way you get to your deeper self is you meditate. But even in, in the West, maybe more in the Middle Ages than now, uh, there was a prayer, there was a long prayer. Uh, there was a church I'm aware of even today that has, they call it perpetual adoration, I believe. It's the, the host that's sanctified in a Catholic mass and in this big golden chalice, and it sits there in a room. And there's always someone in the room. Parishioners take turns, and that means midnight too, I believe, like, you know, throughout the night. And you just take turns, you just go sit in the room. You might be alone, there might be someone else in the room, and you sign up maybe for an hour. And um, I go to a Quaker meeting where it's the type of Quaker meeting where you sit in silence until someone feels like speaking. And if no one feels like speaking, then that's Sunday, uh, you just sit in silence. Good Quakers call that first day, but that's a different story. Anyway, and it occurs to me that, well, at that time, I never felt so good about living when I had that experience, but I felt if someone told me I was going to die the next second, it wouldn't have mattered. I felt that good. And I think that sometimes these dark themes bring me to a place where I feel somewhat open and maybe somewhat broken. You know, my, my, my identity in relation to the size, universe, the all that kind of stuff. And at that time, sometimes I feel closer to God. I feel uh, not as the intense experience I had when I spoke about, but maybe a little bit of it, a taste of it. And there's the uplifting part, but there's also the sad part together. And I spoke in another clip about uh, oneness and duality and how I think when you get closer to God, you can see this world, except maybe the isness becomes foreground and the duality, hot, cold, white, black, pleasant, unpleasant, fades into the background. Whereas our normal life, that the duality is in the foreground. Here's a person I like. Here's a food I don't like. Here's a, you know. And the isness, the pure existence of it, is way, way, way in the background. And so... I think that, um, I, I mean, I, I, I love my wife, I love my son, I, I think that 
a lot of the time in the day I'm in the mental state of anyone else. But sometimes when I get inward and um, reflective, I, I pursue those dark themes. It's like I, I maybe even I wallow in them in a way. I've heard that some like sexual people that mix pleasure and pain or something. And it's it's kind of like that, I guess. Not to to be like sexual, but it's kind of there's the sadness, there's the the the, the ego, fear of death. There's and at the same time, there's like an opening to the universe, like. Uh, what comes in, it's like, that's really what, that's my truer self. That's my deeper self. And it, 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 it's a very interesting feeling. And sometimes I would think that, well, maybe this is unbalanced. But then it occurs to me that this is what is balanced. Being able to live in the phenomenal world, enjoy your family, enjoy your, your, your life as much as possible. But sometimes, with retire, go within. The unexamined, the unexamined life, said I think Aristotle, isn't worth living. And so just sitting in a quiet room with no TV or book or internet, and just thinking about whatever, not necessarily the facts I dwell on, but whatever works for you. And so isn't it unbalanced? Isn't it fearful just to focus on the um, everyday world? just to limit ourselves to what's at hand and what's the latest thing in the newspaper and what am I going to have for lunch? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but if you just limit yourself to that, isn't that what is unbalanced? I remember hearing, I think it was in India, there are, there are certain men, probably women too, who they reach a certain type of their point of their life, but maybe more or less where I am, and they leave their family and they become wandering monks. They shave their head and they just wander in groups. And maybe they live off of alms. I don't know. I, I saw this a long time ago. Now that's taking this maybe to the extreme. Maybe they're saying, well, I spent all my life with the everyday world and now I'm going to really turn towards the inward world and spend most of my time there. And I don't think that's necessary. I mean, if someone wants to do it, fine. But I think just some of this. And also... Um, it was two nights ago. This is September 2020. I live in the United States of America. There was a presidential debate that was, uh, well, not very nice. And it made me think of politicians. And don't some of these people, don't they know that they're going to die? Don't they want, maybe if they're lying in the hospital, to be able to look back and say, well, I looked out for number one, and I provided for my family, and I had to do that. But there were times when I was of use to other people. There were times when people other than my family and friends were glad I was alive. You know, um, I don't know, work in a soup kitchen once in a while or something. And I think if, if, if our politicians thought about that sometimes, maybe we'd have better politics. I think that probably would, would be if they took a, a larger view of where of who they are. I mean, maybe they do. I don't know. I mean, you know, I just know what I see in the news. I don't mean to say that they don't, but I, I, th I don't think they do. I think a lot of them don't. They seem very uh, mean-spirited and not considering, to say, the future of the country or even the, what they're doing presently to the country. Anyway, I, I won't get more, any more political than that. But I will end by saying that the clip when I mentioned cosmic consciousness, I said it was a kind of cosmic consciousness. But maybe I'm saying tonight that that's like the, for me, I mean, other, other things will work for other people. Maybe other people will meditate, sit and meditate about how they love their children or, or, or whatever, about the beauty of the world. It's not that the things that work for me work for everybody. But I think that just getting in touch with that inward self and trying to feel trying to take in more of the world than just the, 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 the everyday kind of selfish kind of, well, maybe selfish is, is too negative, but we have to take care of ourselves. Uh, there's times in life when we have to provide for our families and we have to, you know, do various things. That's not selfish. But it's also good to be able to go to the deeper self and spend some time reflecting and trying to 
have a con an expanded awareness of our place in the world. And if the light does come in, then that makes the term co cosmic consciousness all the more appropriate.